layer lines got you down? Well, today I'm gonna show you some stuff that you can do to help fix those layer lines after you printed your model. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. As I said in that little intro, we are talking about layer lines. We all get them no matter what you're printing with and we have to deal with them in certain different ways for whatever type of models we're working with. Now, a lot of models that I work with are FDM and I work with resin as well. And layer lines are an inevitability. Even in resin, you're still gonna have layer lines that you're gonna have to deal with. Now, a lot of people deal with them in different ways. Some people deal with them with sanding, some people deal with them with fillers and different things like that. Well, today, that's what I'm gonna be talking about as well is what can I use to get rid of layer lines? Can I use fillers? Can I use sandpaper? What can I do that will help me get rid of those? Well, I've got six things sitting here next to a model that we are gonna use to try to do away with layer lines. Now, can I ever print anything without layer lines? No, you're gonna have layer lines. Just accept that, especially in FDM, you're gonna see a lot of layer lines with your prints. Um, you can get go down to ultra fine. There will still be that ultra fine little bit of flare line. So one of the things, and I probably will do a video on this as well, is dealing with the layer line before you print by orienting your model to use the layer lines. It can be a very effective tool, but that also depends on what you're wanting to print and how you're going to print it. But that's a discussion for a different today. Today is talking about fillers, smoothers, all that stuff that I can actually go to my model with and help reduce the look of those fine layer lines. So that's the topic. But before we hop in and start talking about those wonderful fillers, layers, and different th techniques that you can use, um, make sure if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Join us as we have all kinds of content like this that can really kind of help out building and making your models. Also, if you're considering, make sure to give us a thumbs up. That helps us out with YouTube and helps the videos get out there and just helps us um, get seen by more people as we try to kind of suggest new ways of helping out and getting your models even more impressive because that's what we want to do. Thirdly, um, the channel is growing and we continue to grow. Consider hitting that join button and taking a look at some of the perks the membership area has to join. Um, consider becoming a member, get your name up on the, in the videos and stuff like that. So give it a consideration, help us out. That helps us build new things, come up with new models and try out new tools. So, and the final thing I will say in regard to the sales pitch is if you have a question about 3d printing or anything like from this video or just 3d printing in general, leave it down in the comments down below. I try to respond as quickly and as many as I possibly can. Um, but we are growing, lots of questions happen every day, so you may just get a reply of, hey, shoot me an email, and I'll try to get back and help you. So, because that's the whole point of this channel is 3D printing, get to helping you and get to going. So, with that, let's hop over, let's take a look at what we use to kind of thin out the problem. Okay, guys, so kind of along the lines of what I'm talking about. You guys can see I've got a bunch of stuff lined up here and I've got this Miranda class model. You can see it's really, really actually a good print, but there are layer lines to look at and see in the print. And I wanna kind of do something about that and kind of make this look a bit smoother. Now, one way is, and what a lot of people probably would do is this ridging, they would probably sand this completely off. And in some ways I agree with them, but I wanna maintain some of the other detail that was in the print because you know it is actually a really nice print of a Miranda class. It's large because I mean there's the size of my hand. Um, measurement wise, you know this thing is almost 14 inches long. And um, there are several processes that we can do to kind of make this better. So gap fillers. Um, Tester has a really good contour putty. Uh, my tube's pretty beat up, but I use that one a lot. I really like the Tamiya Basic Putty. This is a really handy tool for especially filling in seam lines and stuff like this. This may be the first layer that I put in there, but it works really well to kind of work on that. Another tool that I use is the Vallejo Plastic Putty. Um, this can be found, you guys can find links down in the description down below. But this is another tool that I'll use for smoothing stuff out. Um, it's really kind of handy. Um, all these are Pretty easy to find, especially the testers. You can find that any Hobby Lobby. Most model shops will have the Tamiya or the Vallejo Plastic Putty. The final one that I use for a similar is the Mr. White Putty from uh, Mr. Hobby. 
it works really well too, especially if I'm doing something that needs really dry quickly, this stuff is, is your guy. So the other putty that I use, especially if I'm working on a helmet, is the Bondo glazing and spot putty. This stuff is really cool. And unlike the main Bondo stuff, you don't have to mix it. This is ready to apply and get on there and smooth out and a good sand or a wet sand will take will smooth all these back out. So these are really handy. Um, a lot of times I'll use, this as a spreader that I 3D printed. I'll use it to fill it into the gaps and work really well. We probably do some of that here shortly. But you also notice this frozen bottle on my desk. I sometimes, and depending on if it's a very detailed project that I don't wanna lose a lot of detail, I will come back with actual UV resin and brush it onto the model to start filling in those gaps and sand smooth. Now you notice the word I said, sand. Guys, you're in 3D printing. You're not gonna get through without sanding. It's, you're gonna have to sand down smooth edges and stuff like that in any model that you've got or any little support point, even on a resin model, you're gonna have to sand. So. Be prepared for that. And if you want a video of all the sanding tools, actually, we're going to talk about some sanding tools here towards the end that I use. But these are all really good tools to use to get rid of layer lines. Um, I use this one a lot, especially like Starships, where I've got detail that I want to preserve, like back here in the in this area, where I want to preserve all that detail. I'll very thinly brush in liquid resin on top and fill in the gaps, and I'll use my, um, my frozen... Uh, cure beam and I'll cure it in place. So these are all handy tools. These work really well. Dry times vary. Um, this one is almost instant, but another tool, actually I almost forgot about this. This is a new tool from Frozen. We're gonna open it up. This is Frozen's new light curing putty. And basically what is light curing putty? Well, it is exactly what it says it is and it comes with a nice little applicator stick. You can spread this on and use a cure beam to, to fill it. So if you've got layer lines and stuff that you need to fill, gaps in the model, like how I have that wonderful gap in the saucer section there, I, may, I probably will use this and fill it in and then use my, my light beam and cure it in about 15 seconds. And then a little light sanding and I'm done. I've got a smooth surface. So especially for smooth surfaces, now this is pretty expensive. I probably won't use it for the big gap. I'll probably come in with the filler putty, with the glazing putty and actually do that. But for small areas or gaps when you're putting the seam line, this can be very helpful to use and a great little tool. Um, they are pretty expensive right now. They're not out on Amazon, so you have to order them from Frozen. Unfortunately, since it's coming from Taiwan, you've got a higher shipping charge um that's involved but they do some pretty cool deals with this um so even just using if you've got a real big project you may want to use the uv cure resin to do the filling um but then you can kind of come to the sanding point so these are all tools that you can use and these little sticks i'll go find the the link for these i print these um i use the end of my filament spools to create these tools so that i can get the putty in there and then just pull it across. So an awesome tool, little tools like this that are 3D printed, disposable, can be recycled, are all kind of handy things to kind of keep in mind as you go through it. Now these are just some of the things that I use, especially on FDM, to fill in gaps. If you guys have something that I don't have here, let me know, I'm curious. It's always a growing thing to find new things that we're filling and using the smooth models. Now oftentimes too, when I'm doing the resin, I may take um, talc powder and mix this in a cup with this to thicken it, to kind of give more of a, a layer, especially if I don't care about color. Um, but again, like if I've got a helmet, I really like the glazing spot putty, especially if I've got a big area. Um, now there is a two-part Bondo. I've used it too, especially on helmets. I like this a little bit better. It doesn't dry as fast and it's a little faster to spread because um, I'm saving that time from having to do mixing. Where these guys, especially if you're working on like little miniatures, um, stuff like that, or if you've got a straight seam line, you guys probably saw me using the Tamiya putty on the Super Star Destroyer. 
Um, this worked really well. It bl blended in really well and was really easy to apply. So all these tools are awesome things to consider when you're trying to get rid of a layer line. Um, and they work really, really well. Um, I really, I, I tend to favor the Tamiya uh, for like Warhammer miniatures. I'll go to the Vallejo plastic putty. Big stuff, I usually go to the glazing and spot putty. Uh, the Mr. White, especially if I've just glued something in that and I need something to dry quickly, the Mr. White works really well. And if I just have something that is more grainish, um, I'll tend to go to the testers. Now, is this all you can use? No, I've used wood filler on this stuff before to even get smooth lines out. And you guys can see, you know, the layer lines are not that bad on this model. It's actually really, really nicely done, but it can always be a little bit better. And sanding can get risky, especially with the FDM, because you can sand it to where it just starts to peel because you got it too hot. So um, a lot of times what I will do sanding wise, one thing I do a lot is I'll use a deburring tool for the edges to get like chunks of support off, stuff like that. Instead of sanding it, I use light sandpaper. I really like using sanding twigs, especially in tight detailed areas. Um, nail files, um, memory foam nail files. I use those uh, standard normal fo small files. I'll use those. And one of my favorite tools is the sanding ribbon especially when there's a gap that I need to get into and sand, it can work. It works really well to help out. So those are just a couple of tools. Um, and there's a whole video after of actual of the sanding tools that I use. And I don't see my Mr. Polisher. I use my Mr. Polisher, um, especially on resin prints quite a bit. See one drawer up. I do not know where my little Mr. Polisher went. Well, that's a little disappointing. That's all my silly putty. So silly putty painting, great for creating a mask. Um, if you guys have not tried that out, definitely give it a go. Um, but yeah, I have lost my, my, uh, my tool. Now, one thing too, if you've got gaps, this stuff can work the, the light curing putty, but also I tend to use Milliput to fill in gaps as well. Um, I've also used the liquid green stuff um, in some occasions and stuff like that. So there are all kinds of ways to work on smoothing and layer lines and help fill in gaps. These are just a few tools and options that you can find to do that. So as you can see, I've got quite an arsenal <laughs> that I use to do this, but I'm even using the original material to also help pull down layer lines. So hopefully you guys found this information interesting. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can always come back and see all the new kind of stuff that we're seeing and talking about. Also, hit that like button. Help us out. Um, that way more people see what we're working on, what we're doing. And if you can, consider joining um, the membership. We're all kinds of perks and different things like that, including discounts at my store and different things that can be pretty cool. So again, if you have any questions or even a suggestion to add to my little pile here of how I get rid of layer lines, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys for joining today's video, and we'll see you in the next video.